I don't care if you're a chiropractor, if you're a barista, uh, a checkout uh, person at Food City, I don't care what it is, right? You have a kingdom role that you are playing in the atmosphere that you show up in. And you're either going to punch a clock and run a checklist or you are going to walk with the Holy Spirit and actually advance the kingdom of God. What's up, everybody? Here we are at a brand new Coffee with the Cairo. We have an extra special guest on with us today. He said he's been fired up about this for a week now. We have Dr. Matt Tonus from Knoxville, Tennessee. Not only is he a chiropractor, he is a great friend of mine. And I will say before we start the podcast, one of the few people in my life that I call not only for chiropractic advice, but for family, husband, like real life advice. So it is a truly an honor to have Dr. Matt Tonus with us. Also, just a little bit so you know, he is the co-founder of the Chiropractic Revolution, a movement we started about 11 years ago that teaches chiropractors about the Lord, uh, how to put the Lord first, and then their families, and then chiropractic. Dr. Matt, it is an honor to have you with Caroline and I on Coffee with the Cairo. Yes. Well, thank you guys for having me. It's super exciting to be on here. Your first, you know, couple months of episodes that you guys have been doing for your patients have been absolutely inspiring. I love listening to them. I love the impact that it's making within the community. And uh, thank you for asking me. It's just an honor to come on and talk with you guys. Absolutely. We are so happy to have you. I know taking time out of your busy schedule to hop on here with us for a little bit, but tell all of our listeners first how you and Dr. Heskett got connected because I know it's been rewind for a few years back, right? Yeah. So you want like the real story? Or you want oh, one that sounds good? Yeah, the real, <laughs> real one. one. Okay. Yeah, All right. The real one. All right. So I was a student in my very first quarter at Life University down in the Marietta, Atlanta, Georgia area. And in walks this, you know, group of five or six chiropractors just to fire up all those first quarter students and also to just encourage their attendance and participation at a really cool event that was coming up. So long story short is we're listening to all these people and then all of a sudden Dr. Heskett starts talking. And I mean, I don't have to tell you guys, he is yeah. electric. So when he starts talking, um, the energy is just off the off the rails. And I remember sitting there as this you know, young, probably 23 year old kid at the time, just thinking to myself like, dang, like this is super empowering and, you know, enthusiasm based and filled. And he shared stories about, you know, how passionate he was about helping his patients and, you know, what a blessing it is to be a chiropractor. And I just felt so inspired and so encouraged. He mentioned, he also shared a little bit about this really cool new hot tub he just got, which was, was just exciting, but uh, he was just so, he was just so excited and fired up to be a chiropractor that like instantly in that moment, um, subconsciously, I was like, dang, I probably just signed up for the greatest profession in the world. I'm so excited to be a part of this. And uh, from there, he said, you know, hey, come to this event on the weekend. And so then I went to that event and got to hear more of him. We didn't meet, you know, in detail at that point. Mm -hmm. Long story short is we end up with a mutual friend. His name's Matt Harris, another off the charts, yeah. awesome chiropractor in Tennessee. And uh, Matt Harris is kind of the mutual friend that connected us. Then Dr. Heskin and I really got to know each other when we both became a part of this absolutely transformative experience called warrior coaching, where you really learn how to walk out this mission in your life, right? And how to, you know, um, just have integrity in, in the callings that we all have as chiropractors, as men of God, as mm -hmm. husbands, you know, uh, fathers, all those things. And so we got to spend several years together uh, growing in our relationship with the Lord, with each other, with our families, all that stuff and warrior coaching. And that's where we really connected and kind of started to develop the special bond that we have. And, um, you know, now I just work for him at the chiropractic revolution. It's just what I do. So he's your boss. He's your boss. Is oh, he, he is true? fully yeah. my boss. I mean, he is, you know, I'm, I'm a partner there. I'm a, like a minority sure. partner, 
there's a minority partnership that I have, but uh, other than that, yeah, he's my Maloney. boss. All of it was good except the last part. So <laughs> tell everybody out there a little bit about, you know, <clears throat> one of the things that our listeners know about our office is when they come in the office, like we have a, a, a common theme there. And that is that, you know, the Lord is, is first. And we know, uh, we know that uh, Caroline and I know how important the Lord is to you and your family, but tell us how, you know, you prioritize. Cause one of the things I admire about Dr. Matt is his discipline to mm-hmm. put the Lord first and spend time with the Lord. So just tell us, you know, how long you, a little bit about your chiropractic journey, how long you've been a chiropractor and kind of how you prioritize your life. And, you know, maybe not everybody out there is a chiropractor that's listening to this, but you have some type of career. So you can just plug in whatever it is that God's called you to do into the career part. But just share that with us for, for a few minutes. Yeah. So uh, I've now been a chiropractor since 2002. So um, this episode's 2024, just in case you listen to it in 2027, because this thing's <laughs> going to live on for a long time. But uh, yeah, so I've been a chiropractor for 22 years. And uh, they, like my walk with the Lord was not something that I even really fully recognized was going on. But, you know, I, I would go back to my childhood days, like early on, like there, there was some pulling inside of me to God that was just remarkable, right? Like, so, you know, I, I would be as a kid, uh, I would sit in, um, atmospheres and, and be protected. Like, you know, whether it was, you know, challenging things that were going on, you know, in a family, family life, whatever it was like, God just protected me. You know, I had friends that were just very off track in their life, but God never let me go off track. Mm -hmm. Um, When I went through challenges as a kid, like without any necessary uh, teaching from people, I would just call out to God. Like I remember laying in bed uh, as a kid going through challenges and just calling out to the Lord, but never having been taught that. But just it was so cool for me to look back at just how he covered me, protected me, poured his favor over me, all of these things. So it's super cool that way. Um, integrating that into, let's say, what I would use a word would be like integrity of my life. So that's how I hope to live. I'm certainly not you know, exceptional at it. But like even when I look at choosing a mentor and, you know, choosing people that I would love to be able to learn and grow from. That's probably one of the, the highest value priorities that I have would be integrity and just being able to look and say like, okay, this person actually has integrity in their life between the decisions they make with the the way they allocate their time, the way they allocate their finances, the way they allocate all these things, right? I know that in the world, you know, if we surveyed whatever, a hundred people, like, and we say, what's the most important thing in your life, right? People know what the right answer is, right? Like 95 out of those hundred people are going to say, like, I bet you the most common answer we're going to get from anybody is they're going to say family. Oh, my family is the most important thing in my life, right? If they're grounded in their faith, they'll say God first, then they'll say their family. But to me, I really look like, and, and I try, I'm not, again, I'm not saying I'm exceptional at it. I'm getting better and better, but I really try to be able to say like, if that's true, like if that's the value proposition that God is number one in my life, my family's number two, then you should be able to look at my most valuable resources, which I would say for me, I always think time's the most valuable resource I have. Secondly, um, you know, relationships are obviously highly valuable resources. We have highly valuable resources like finances. You should be able to look at those things in my life and say that those things exhibit the priority of God and family in there, right? And then for me, like the next highest on that list would be uh, my calling through my vocation, which is chiropractic. So you should be able to look and be able to say like, okay, from a time perspective, a finance perspective, a relationship perspective, Mm -hmm. is there integrity in those things? And so for me, um, that's how I try to stay consistent with it and just litmus test myself when I'm creating goals or when I'm reflecting back on how the last week was like, did my life reflect that? 
those those things are most important. And sometimes they're off track, you know, and you know whether it's a, a a feeling of distance, like hey, I haven't really checked in with my kids the way that I want to be checking in with them, or I haven't been engaged, or I haven't checked in with my spouse. We haven't had that coffee time consistently this last week. Um, so that's, that's it. I don't know if that answers your question, but it's, Mm -hmm. you know, for me, it's that integrity and then it's, it's the action that goes with it. So it's more than just like an ideal on a piece of paper somewhere. There's an action that goes with that to create alignment really. Mm -hmm. And what is that, what does that look like when you're talking about your relationship with Jesus? How do you implement that into your day to day, especially because you have such a busy schedule, you're running multiple practices, you have multiple kids in every sport and club, your wife is on the go 24 seven. So how do you do that in your day to day to make it a priority? Yeah, so again, like none of these ideas are mine. They're not like Matt Tonus isms, but these are what mentors do. And this is why you have to be around the right group of people who are going to help grow you. So, you know, uh, like uh, Dr. Heskett and I, like we know hands down that if we don't take time to get away with the Lord, Mm. we are going to slowly acclimate to the way of the world. Right. And so Uh, real quick, how does that, how do you feel that affects people's health as well mm -hmm. as being a practitioner and a chiropractor Share with the listeners, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but how important is that when it comes to your overall health and well-being? Because I know uh, Dr. Amy, Matt's uh, wife is a chiropractor as well. We may have her in on one of the episodes. She's a, she's just brilliant. Yeah. But tell us how that uh, plays out in your health. Because, you know, we're running and we got these cell phones. We got all this stuff going on. You know, we're not just stopping Tell the listeners out there, how important is it to get that time? Oh, so first of all, it is like, it is the single most important thing. There's practical things like you're talking about as far as cell phone notifications and all these distractions and ways of the world. But then there's also like, let's just call it principled applications where, you know, the the truth of getting away from or, or getting in the word and out of the world is paramount for your health. So first of all, it all starts with belief, right? Like, so the scripture says, you know, um, as a, as a man believeth, so too is he right. Or out of the overflow of the heart, right. Someone will speak or, um, you know, we, we pray that you would prosper and be well in all things, just as your soul prospers, right? So these mm. are fruits that say you are going to prosper, meaning your health, right, is going to prosper in relationship to your soul, which is your mind, emotions, and will. So your mind has to be right in order for you to prosper. And there is a way of the world that is working to get your mind to be distracted by things that don't line up with the word of God. So that could be the cell phone pinging. It could be the boardroom of people sitting around at these platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, who literally are trying to figure out ways to get you and your kids more addicted to your, to their phones so that you spend more time on their platforms. It could also be some demonic influence from some pharmaceutical company that knows that the more they diagnose and convince you that you have a problem, the more you need their medication. And so the more you start overflowing out of your mouth, these things that you own a certain disease, oh, I have this, like, I'm not even willing to say it. Like, I'm not even willing to put those words into action because your words are a piece of how you will partner with God to create your future. So at the end of the day there, you have to make sure that you have total alignment in these things. And the way of the world is not in alignment with that. The way of the world is stuff like, you know, debt, instant gratification, disease this, lack of identity that, whatever it is. Oh, Mary, you have cancer. Then Mary starts walking around proclaiming that as her identity. I have this. I have that. And the reality is, is she is like... In a way, she is amplifying something that's challenging that's going on there. Mary has to start to walk around proclaiming the word of God, right? 
which is the opposite of death and destruction and darkness. She's got to like open the blinds, let the light in, in every sense of the word and start to bring that into alignment with everything. She can, she cannot proclaim disease out of her mouth and experience well-being in her health. It is not going to happen. So that's, I mean, from a health perspective for the patients, which is what we're here for in this conversation, that is it. You might have a diagnosis on paper, but you need to get a hold of what God says. You need to get a hold about what the healer, right? What the great physician says about you and his plans to prosper you and to give you a hope and a future, right? And to not harm you and, and start walking these things out. So, and that all starts with coming away with him. Right? You have to come away with him and get above the clouds, which means you're above the world, and be able to renew your mind in the things that are godly, not worldly. And you know, the, the beautiful part of that is, is when you do that, there is going to be a prosperity in this world in every sense of the word. Your health is going to be improved. Your relationships are going to be improved. The overflow of that time away with the Lord is going to result in prosperity in the physical as well. It's a scripture. It says it, that you would prosper in all things as your soul prospers. And you got to get away with the Lord to prosper your soul. So good. So good. So good. So how, um, you know, how do you... I mean, how do you get, how do you get away or what are some of the things that you can do that you can help our listeners say, what are, what are some of your favorite things to do? I know you love to move, you know, that's always been something that's dear to you. You have kids that are, you know, in rowing. I just watched uh, Boys in the Boat last night, which is a phenomenal movie, but uh, uh, Matt's, Dr. Matt's daughter is, is a rower. Um, just tell us how, you know, and, and, and what's really awesome about that too is, that your kids actually by seeing you move, they move. Um, and you know, I know Mateo is going to, uh, scholarship to Furman for running. And so, uh, you got Wisconsin up there, Peyton's rowing and you got all these kids doing all the activities, but tell us about movement. And is that some of the, at some of the times when you're moving, is that a time that you find where you escape and do that? Yeah. And, and absolutely. And I think that that'll be, unique for the person, right? Like, so for example, for me, if I'm doing like a weight training workout in the the garage where I'm having to do something like count reps and pay attention to my like physical exhaustion level and that sort of stuff, that's not the best for me as far as like that type of getting away. But for like for right now, for me walking, right? Because I don't think about putting one foot in front of the other. It just happens. I'm really good at it. I've been doing it for 49 years. So I can just put one foot in front of the other that way. And then my mind isn't counting reps. It's not doing that sort of thing. And I'm able to, in a place like that, come away with the Lord. So prior to walking, it used to be running. I used to just go for a run, the same thing. I didn't have to think about it. I just did it. And I would come away uh, with the Lord that way. And so um, it, it, it's going to be different for everybody. I mean, I could see someone successfully doing it on a treadmill. I could see somebody successfully doing it on a Peloton bike, whatever it might be. But, um, the reality there is, is that there's for sure a great opportunity to get away with the Lord while you're engaging and something that's probably like quite good for you too, at the same time. Right. So, um, that's awesome. And then too, like, I believe supernaturally that, um, you know, God can alter natural time for us. So, you know, I I think the tendency a lot of times is people to think like, oh, I don't have a half an hour just to sit down and just soak in worship with the Lord, etc. But I believe that when we honor God with our first fruits, right? And so those fruits are things like our time, right? So when we honor God with the first fruits, you can't even begin to understand how he's orchestrating everything in your favor. So whether that's something from like, oh, you would have been stuck in traffic, but guess what? The car line's just flying today, mom. So you don't have to worry about that because you honored God with the first fruits or, you know, something that may have, you know, just been a time distraction or whatever the case is, you know, God's going to take care of it. And so um, I used to, you know, I remember teaching at youth groups and it'd be time for, 
uh, exams and all these kids are stressed out because they're studying so much in exams. And I, I remember just saying to them, guys, like just honor God with the first fruits of your time, even 15 minutes and watch how much better your studying goes. Watch how much easier your intake is. Watch how all those things that you used to have to read the page three times. Now you only need to do it once, right? God is a supernatural God. His laws are not the laws of limitation that we put in this natural world, right? You know, again, scripture says like a day is like a thousand years, right? Like it's just, it's not our natural limitations that way. It's awesome. I love that. Yeah. And so switching gears too, I mean, that's being outside of the office and things that you can do um, just to, you know, have more time with Jesus, foster that relationship for patients as well as doctors. Yeah. Bring us inside your yeah. office. What does that look like when you walk in your office in the morning and when you've got patients in there all day? Give us kind of a Dr. Matt run through of your day. Yeah. So days, days are full and they're going to do one of two things for me. Okay. They're either, it's either going to be, you know, a kingdom advancing day or it's going to be a checklist day. Like I don't really have an in-between, right? So when it's a checklist day for me, it sucks for everybody. It sucks for me. It sucks for every single human being that God has brought into my atmosphere because it's all about getting through, right? Yes. It's not about advancing the kingdom. Now, I don't care if you're a chiropractor, if you're a barista, uh, a checkout uh, person at Food City, I don't care what it is, right? You have a kingdom role that you are playing in the atmosphere that you show up in. And you're either going to punch a clock and run a checklist, or you are going to walk with the Holy Spirit and actually advance the kingdom of God. So I spend just as many days in the mistake side of it, where I think to myself, if I was say like the barista at Starbucks, I'd be thinking, okay, now I have to make, you know, a double espresso macchiato with three shots of vanilla or whatever the case is, right? Or I'm going to think to myself, there's this person on the other side of this machine right here. And this beverage that I'm creating for them is going to be such a blessing to them. This is a highlight of their day. And when I hand it off to them, I'm going to use some kind of life giving exchange that says, you know, Miss Caroline, you know, your double this is ready to go skinny fat chai latte thing. And, um, you know, have a great day. You know what? That jacket looks great on you, right? Whatever it is, I'm going to speak life. I'm going to do it with intention because God put me here to change the atmosphere that I'm going to go into. And so it doesn't matter where we are. Like I think about how hard a day must be for a school teacher. Oh man. Right. But yeah. dang, when they can wrap their head around the influence that they have for the mm -hmm. kingdom of God, like look out, right? So a yeah. doctor's a doctor's just another one of those roles where you get to say, here's the gifts and talents and wisdom that God's given me. Here's how I'm going to put it to use. But I'm not just going to do it from a scientific background of doctoring. I'm going to do it with intention, right? I'm going to do it. Sure, I'm going to partner my science with the wisdom of the Lord. And we're going to create atmospheric change that is going to bring heaven to earth, just as we're called to do, right? That's awesome, dude. So one of the greatest things that you and I get to experience, that, and, and probably we didn't even know this when we, when we were starting out in school, is just to be able to, you know, the Bible says, you will lay your hands on the sick and they will recover to watch God work in a, in the human body, mm. to watch, to watch a body heal. Um, you know, I've seen things in 30 years of chiropractic that I just would never fathom. Like it almost just blows my mind at how someone can come in and not even tell me all the symptoms they're having, but then come back two weeks, three weeks, a month later, two months later and go, you didn't even know I had this. But I had X, Y, Z. I had Crohn's. I had difficulty hearing. I had, you know, and a lot of our listeners, they don't know the first chiropractic patient 
was deaf. You know, Harvey Liller was a janitor. He got a uh, upper cervical adjustment and it restored his hearing. 1895 and chiropractic was born. But maybe share a miracle that you've had happen in your life uh, through chiropractic that you were just like, oh my gosh, uh, I'll share run real quick. This guy said, I can't hear out of the right side. And I just felt, you know how you know that you know I was prayed up and as what we talked about earlier, I was trained up. Dr. Tyler and I were talking on the way home last night. Uh, you have to be prayed up. To no one, no one would choose chiropractic, right? It's a chosen thing to where, you know, a lot of people don't come to chiropractic and go, oh man. And we have, you know, like I just called my dentist and to get my teeth clean and we're out until September. I'm like, dude, it's May. <laughs> I don't think we're scheduled out to September. We do very well, but that's a little bit different than what the calling that God has put in our life. Sure. But just, but just share maybe some of the miracles or one of the miracles that touched your heart or changed your life that you've seen uh, through adjusting someone. Yeah. So that list, I mean, just to start with, would be huge, right? And and the number of things that I could share that almost every listener on here would have no ability to identify with would be would be crazy. <laughs> like I had this this one. Um, woman who immigrated from Russia and she didn't even speak English and she would come with her husband who could, could translate a little bit, but she had breast cancer. And I mean, I'll, I'll share other stuff that's more tangible, but I watched her body, right? The great physician with inside her push a tumor out from the side of her breast, develop a little stalk on it. So now it was hanging outside of her breast and it literally just wilted and fell off, right? Like, Un, unfathomable stuff. Yeah. But yeah. like, I would think, for example, about um, Angela. So like Angela would have came into our office and she was struggling big time in many ways. What walked her through the door was some neck pain that she had residually. But once we connected and we got talking, her mental health had been plummeting steadily for the last few years. Her husband was an airline pilot, so she was a lot of time on her own as he was away, and she was just deteriorating, deteriorating, deteriorating. And so, you know, we took x-rays on her. We found a very pronounced subluxation pattern in her neck, which we were convinced was contributing towards her discomfort of her neck. But more than that, what I knew was that was impacting and affecting the way that her whole central nerve system was working, right? So your brain, your spinal cord, and the backs of your eyeballs are the three parts of your brain that actually exist in the world. And we have the blessing as chiropractors to be able to touch the extension of the brain inside their back with a chiropractic adjustment to regulate the input and output to the brain to get healthier and healthier and help the good, amazing potential that God put inside of every person. So long story short is, is um, at the, at the end of her first nine months of care, she actually wrote a letter to us talking about how she had on three occasions gotten within inches of taking her life. Mm -hmm. And that since starting care in the office, she started to not only feel less neck pain, she started to think more clearly, she wow. started to make healthier choices, and she's never been back to that place of darkness that she was in where she was in such mental despair that she thought the only way out was to be able to just finish everything. And so, you know, that type of example of the profound impacts on somebody's overall sense of well-being, mental clarity, not just pain levels, but absolute clarity of function in the human body when you work with where it all where it all literally physically starts from, right? We obviously know life starts from the Lord, but physically in our bodies, life starts from the brain, right? Yeah, and to be able yeah. to work with that day in and day out is a blessing. So yes, headaches, back pain, story after story. But, you know, those, those, those amazing healings of the multiple sclerosis patient who is literally so catatonic that they can't even lay on the table because their body's so rigidly and flexed and you make an adjustment and you watch with your eyes as you adjust them, those catatonic muscles slowly relaxing on the table and them being able to now lay with their legs touching the table instead of being bent up in the air because they're so contracted. It's just, 
it's a miracle to us and to God's just like, of course, yeah. right? Yeah. Of course. That's how that's I made what, this. That's how what I made Dr. this. Yeah, that's what Dr. Ben Rawl said. He said it, it's not a miracle because that's what the body's designed to do. You uh, know, to us, it's a miracle, but yes. the body's designed to heal. So therefore, it just happens. I had a guy yesterday at the front. I was in Morristown, and I was uh, working on some stuff at the front, and he was passing me. And he, I haven't seen him in a while. And he goes, I got to tell you something. He goes, who's that doctor back there? I said, well, that's Dr. Chase or whatever. He goes, I had dizziness. And I go, yeah, yeah. He goes, no, this is my favorite part. That When they go to me like this, no, you're not listening. <laughs> you're, you, you're not listening. They go, I, and which is true. They go, he goes, I was dizzy. I went everywhere. He goes everywhere. Like I'm tearing up just saying it because I go everywhere. And this guy's from uh, New York. And he says everywhere trying to get this dizziness fixed. Eyes, ears, nose, and throat. I've had surges in the inner ear. He goes, he just adjusts this uh, uh, atlas, my top bone. He goes, Doc, it's gone. I go, yeah. He goes, no, 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 you're not listening. It's gone. He goes, it's gone. My dizziness is gone. And he's so excited. And man, it doesn't get old to watch and to think that we have a, a part in that is just it, it's amazing. It is a miracle, uh, the way that God designed the body. So I've got to ask you before, before we start winding down. Yeah. So you moved, you moved from Canada, right? Yeah. To Knoxville. Now you're in Knoxville. You've been there how long in Knoxville? A uh, year and three quarters, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> first, the first question on the table is what's your favorite college football team? Okay. That would be... Yeah. So it's not big in Canada, so we got to ask yeah. that. Just a real fire question. Yeah, well, dude, I mean, Knoxville, you bleed orange, buddy. Like, it is completely... That is the correct answer. That's, that's that all is... that happens, man. So I would tell you straight up, like, you know, I love cheering for my friends' teams. Like, I got a friend, Scott. He's a Michigan guy. If a Michigan game is going on, I literally... I'm cheering for it because I love him, and I want to see that his team does great. When yeah, Alabama's yeah. not playing UT... I love you. I want to see your Alabama team do great. But as a whole across the board, when a UT game is on, I'm cheering for UT, man. Man, that's just – well, anyway, anyway, it's good to have you in Knoxville. So <laughs> the next question would be tell us how – I love – like I said at the beginning, I love most everything about Matt. So tell us how you um, – how you're acclimating to – I know a lot is going on. You have to relocate four kids mm -hmm. from Grim Grimsby, yep. uh, Canada, down to Knoxville, Tennessee. And now we're, you know, 45 minutes to an hour away. And the most we see each other is through a phone, but that's awesome. But tell us how, you know, that transition has been and how you're adapting and how you like Knoxville. Yeah. So I would say to you that the greatest part of this whole transition has been just the way that it's grown my faith. And, and because when you undertake something like that, you either are going to have to do like, you have to go all in, right? Like yeah. you either have to go into that, like being like, this is it. Like, this is what God's called us to do. This is how we're moving forward. And God's going to cover the whole thing. Or you're going to go into it in an apprehensive what the Lord would say is double-minded way. And so it's been tremendous for, for me, for my wife, for our family. Um, but we, we, we had to choose to go into it, believing that this is what God has desired for our family. And this is what we're going to do going forward. And so in terms of that, man, that transition, like it's a lot, there's no doubt about it. There's a lot of like, items that you have to contend with when you go through it. But dude, I could not even, we would need three hours minimum on here for me to share with you each of the blessings and the absolute like undeniable way that God has put his hand on every one of those things. So like I, I seriously would say like the only thing that has been an issue is just like the effort it took, right? Like there hasn't been anything that has been a negative impact for us, but that 
Dude, like you got to come away in the morning and you got to get with the Lord and be reminded of why you are going to go through the effort that you're going to go through that day. Why? Like why, Caroline, is it worth making three lunches every morning? Why? And if you don't, you're going to get angry. Yeah. You're going to be like, this is a lot. Like this is just a lot putting three lunches together. But when you get away with the Lord and he's like, Caroline, this, I made you for this, right? Those little kids, right? You are stewarding them into this world and I have purposes for their life and you're their mother and I'm utilizing you to be able to bring them in for such a time as this and go, but you can lose sight of all that real, real quick. And when you're going through a checklist of, you know, immigration and moving to another country and starting new school systems and, you know, all of the, the details that go with it, like just I, like, I, I wouldn't even want to look back, to be honest with you, to say how many hours went into it. But when you come away with the Lord, mm-mm, right, you you just realize like it's one foot in front of the other. And dude, the blessing of it has been outstanding. Outstanding. So good. Yeah. Have Come you on. had anything? Well, I was going to say, has there been maybe like one thing stand out culture shock wise for you? I mean, you did come from Canada. Yes. To East Tennessee. So. Yeah, probably the biggest thing, like the, the biggest plus for us in East Tennessee, which is culturally shocking, great, mm -hmm. is just the volume and high percentage of people who have a faith walk with the Lord, which is, is um, special about this area for sure. Um, and then the probably like the biggest negative culture shock, I would say is Mountain Dew. <laughs> 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 yeah. So easily accessible everywhere. It's everywhere. just, I just didn't know that was a thing like it is here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, our, anyway. our energy, our energy drinks. You know, you see the patients come in. Yeah. I know some of the patients are throwing theirs out the window right now, listening to this in the car. <laughs> but uh, the energy drinks are a trip. They trip me yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Cool. Matt, it's been a pleasure having you, man. Yes. Uh, we thank you so much for your time. Um, tell us a little bit about how somebody can get in touch. I know we have some people out there, listeners, that might want to come to mm. the Chiropractic Revolution. Give them a little uh, insight on what that is and how they can get in touch with us. Yeah, well, I know you, you know, for sure, most of the listeners on here are going to be, you know, pretty digital savvy. So we've got our Facebook page, we've got our Instagram page, and we have our website, which is the com. And so uh, lots of great ways you can reach out. The Chiropractic Revolution, I mean, of course, it's geared towards chiropractors, but we have non-chiropractors who attend as well. And it's life-changing for them because like we talked about even here, you just supplement the word you know, chiropractor for whatever your ministry that God's called you to in your life is. And I think we're all the same, man. We are all the same. It's, you know, we need to, to be Jesus, family, chiropractic, in alignment. We need to hang around with people who can support us in that. Um, and, and that's it. So we'd love to be able to have people attend the chiropractic revolution, even if they're not chiropractors. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, last thing I want to say before we go is Dr. Matt, um, you know, is a is a true example uh, of what I consider success to be, because if I run his life, his marriage, his relationship with his with his boys, and his daughter through the word of God, um, then I'm going to see the fruit of a godly man and someone that um doesn't put his practice above his family or his life. He's not perfect, but I just want to say it is an honor to walk alongside you, Dr. Matt, every single day, and you are one of my mentors, and even though you're younger than me and not quite as good as looking, I <laughs> love you, and I'm so grateful for uh, that you live in Knoxville, that you're close, closer to me now than Canada, for sure, and that you are a personal friend and colleague and uh, thank you for spending your valuable time uh, today on Coffee with the Cairo. We love you. I love, I love you too. Thank you guys so much. And uh, coming from you, Dr. Michael, that means so much to me. So I appreciate you uh, sharing your heart with me there. All right. Thanks, guys. Love you all. Till next time.